Let's talk about the out campaign. Let's get into that a little more in depth. I understand the analogy with the gay rights movement. Uh, GLBT activists 15 years ago, however long it was ago, um, had a national coming out day. And it succeeded at raising consciousness. People everywhere came out and you realized your cousin was gay or your uncle was gay or, or you had the courage to come out. Not you, but me. I had the courage to come out as gay. So I'm sensitive to these issues. Um, but I see that the, the analogy kind of breaks down. And if we use the GLBT metaphor, it seems to me gays and lesbians want to raise con consciousness and increase acceptance of them, kind of have a place at the table. But they don't add to that, I want to convince the heterosexuals to become gay. But the atheist movement says, not only do I want to come out as atheist, but doggone it, I want to get all the other religious people to turn into atheists well, too. Well, yes, I mean, that, you make a, a very good point. Uh, th there are sort of two tiers, I suppose, to the, to the atheist out movement. At very least, it would be nice to achieve what the gay movement mm -hmm. achieved and, and simply win a place at the table so that we are no longer uh, despised, rejected, <coughs> and acquainted with grief. <laughs> um, but then there's, uh, there's, uh, there's the second tier, which, as you, as you say, is, is actually to, uh, to convert people. And I'm, I'm into the second part, but I, but I know that a number of my colleagues are not. I mean, for them, it would be sufficient just to be uh, accepted as, a, as, 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 as human like everybody else, with rights and with, um, with, a, with a vote and somebody that, you, that you've got to take account of. Mm. Um, so there is a difference, and you pointed out the difference, but I don't think it's a difference that should put us off. I mean, I, th I think that the precedent is strong enough that the success of the gay rights movement should give us courage, uh, and, and uh, we, should, we should go ahead and, and try to emulate. I mean, I think that the, um, the, the women's liberation movement is, is, is another one, which in, in, in both cases they're, they're achieved by consciousness raising, which is a phrase I constantly use, uh, I, I've sometimes been accused, well, no, let, hang on, let's, I'll, I'll ask you, let you oh. go ahead. <clears throat> so if, uh, if our goal, if your goal at the RDF and uh, your ambition with getting atheists around the world or in the United States, North America, Europe, the West, to come out as atheists, if your goal is to increase that number uh, uh, by raising consciousness, do you think that having an uncompromising stance uh, speaking the truth as you see it, uh, because you're interested in the truth at all costs, no matter how painful. Do you think that uncompromising stance hurts the cause, makes it harder for people to kind of go through that process of self-examination and looking at why they believe what they believe? Or do you just want to wallop them with the truth and hope it smacks them, uh, you know, snaps them out of it, you know, out of their credulity? It's a very difficult political decision, and I, stre I stress the word political. I'm, I'm not a, v a very expert politician, and I could very easily be persuaded, a little bit of this came up in the panel I was on this morning, mm. I could very easily be persuaded that it's actually the wrong tactic politically to be, be so in your face. Um, uh, Rottweilers are very nice dogs, actually. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I, I, I had a sort of public debate with the physicist Lawrence Krauss. Uh, it, it, was a, it was published in Scientific American, and some of you may have seen it. And it, it, I think it's rather interesting because we, we completely share the same world view, but we had a slightly different political view. He, his point was, was we're in the business of seduction. Mm. And you mm -hmm. don't seduce people by saying you're an idiot. Uh, and so what you do is you flatter them, you cajole them, you sweet talk them. And I, I guess I'm not a very good seducer because uh, um, I, I find it very hard to, to do that. If somebody's talking palpable nonsense, um, then I, I find it just, it's not quite my style to say, well, very interesting point you make there. But, uh, <laughs> Have you considered? Uh, um, and, but I, I, I suppose I think it's quite a good thing that there are other people out there doing that, like, like Lawrence Krauss. And in the particular instance of the evolution-creation 
battle. And by creation, by the way, I include in intelligent design. Right. It's a total fiction, to use the separate phrase for, for, for um, creationism and intelligent design. Um, in the political battle in American schools over the teaching of evolution or, or creation, I am very conscious that I am not the most effective advocate. Mm. Uh, I, I mean, I, I actually noticed this when I met um, Eric Rothschild, the lead lawyer for our side in the Pennsylvania. Mm. Um, the Kitzmiller. Yeah, Kitzmiller. And um, we had a very nice talk and uh, over, over lunch. And at the end, he said, well, Thank goodness we didn't call you as an expert witness. Mm. Uh, well, but just let me touch on that a little. Yeah. You're, you have kind of a dual, you have two careers almost. You're uh, the world's most prominent atheist. You're also one of the world's most prominent spokespersons for science. Your position at Oxford is Charles Simoni, chair of the public understanding of science. So I understand how uh, you might say, well, uh, I might not be the best voice when it comes to science education, especially in the states, church-state separation or, or intelligent design in the schools. But you're, it seems to me you're not just one of many voices. In many conversations, you're the only voice because of your prominence, because of your authority, and a lot of Americans who aren't up on the issues like we are, uh, they say, wow, here's this brilliant uh, know-it-all know from England, from Oxford, who is telling me my central beliefs are wrong and he's doing that because he's a scientist and so science is somehow on the opposite side of all the issues I hold dear. That is exactly one of the, the points that um, Rothschild meant and that mm. other, other people have, have meant. Um, I, I've been told that, that uh, prominent creationists love me because they, mm. can u they could use me to say look you see um, evolution, well, science generally but especially evolution leads to atheism and uh, were, were I to go in, were I to have gone into the court in in Dover, Pennsylvania, and the uh, the, the lawyer for the other side had said, "Mr. Dawkins, is it true that you were led to atheism because of your understanding of evolution?" I would have had to say yes. Right. And, and, and do you equate science and atheism? No, I don't equate it. But no, nevertheless, I would have had to, to have answered a yes to that to that question, whereupon. The lawyer would simply have said, uh, ladies and gentlemen of the jury, my case rests. Mm. Um, because it's, it, it, it's axiomatic that anything that promotes atheism has got to be bad. And so if, if some part of science uh, pr pr promotes atheism, it, uh, then, then you, when you're trying to achieve a political objective of uh, winning the battle about the teaching of evolution in American schools, the politically uh, shrewd tactic, the, um, the the tactic which might get the, the best results, is to say, oh, no, no, not a problem, of course you can be religious. Uh, religion is totally compatible with, with, with evolution. It's just God's way of doing it. I mean, why, why wouldn't God use natural selection as the, as the way that he, he chooses to uh, to, make, to make life? Of course you can go on being, being religious. Now that is that's the expedient political tactic, and that's the tactic that uh, the, the most effective lobbyists in America for the teaching of evolution use. And, 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 and they don't like what I do, mm. and I don't blame them. Um, so but you concede you may undercut their mission, but you're fighting a different fight. That's a bigger right. One, I, mean, I, I think it's a, it's a sort of different fight, and I, but I do have somewhat divided loyalties because my, my profession as a scientist is I'm an evolutionary scientist, and I hate to see the teaching of evolution, which I think is the most, uh, it's by far the, the, the central um, subject in biology, my, my own field. It also gives you, I mean, it's, it's a wonderfully exciting thing to understand. I think it's truly tragic that so many children are being denied uh, the opportunity to learn about this wonderful idea because of systematic subversion from, from religious interests. And so if it's true that, I, that my waging of, a, of what in one sense is a larger war is causing those who are fighting this battle within the war 
if, if, it's, if, if I'm making life difficult for them, then I really do have divided. I, mean, I really feel very conflicted about that. You, so you